G'day and welcome back to Nucleares. Back by popular demand, a lot of you are saying that you're having troubles getting a stable output of power to the grid, or you're even having your turbines blowing up or even needing repairs. So I've got an in-depth tutorial, kind of quickly, as fast as possible, while showing you all the cause and effects and things you need to know to get this up and running. So let's go ahead from left to right, and you'll want to turn on your fuel residue panel as well as your pressurizer. At your pressurizer panel, you wanna turn on its heater on the high setting. And what that's gonna do is that it's gonna increase this vessel pressure bar. Let's go ahead and turn this panel on as well and work our way down to the right further until we get to this actual little switch here. Let's flick it on into the normal and that's going to allow us to come over to the fuel residue and boop it into the core just like so. Once you've done that, just go ahead and you can just shut that fuel residue panel down as you don't need it again till you shut down. So moving on along, we've got our normal switch that we just did just there. Energy generation, let's just go ahead and turn this panel on as well as the primary coolant system. While you're standing at the primary coolant system, you'll go ahead and turn the condenser load freight pump on which will increase this condenser level right here. So we'll turn this on as well as the last panel to the left of it. So doing all that, you've turned everything on, that's perfectly fine. Last thing you need to do is you need to pull a vacuum on the condenser to make it more effective and more efficient. So let's go ahead and flip that switch just like that, nice and easy. From there, we're almost ready to output to the grid. So let's go ahead and request to start operations. Wait for the request received there it is right there sooner or later they'll give us another message or another notification whatever it is through that tablet to say when they're ready for that power so here we are increasing our condenser level just like so everything takes time to pump up or pump down just by turning this on and we'll turn that switch off when this gets to 20,000 this vacuum is nearly pulled and all you'll need to do is just turn that switch back off when it gets to 100% and it's literally just set and forget. You'll never need to worry about it almost again. Coming back over to our pressurizer, this switch right here at high setting, which is increasing this as fast as possible because you don't want to increase the temperature before this gets to at least above 80 bars, which we are almost at at the moment. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and turn this down to low, just so it increases a little bit slower. That's awesome. Come back over here, we've probably pulled our vacuum, so let's go ahead and turn that switch off. And our condenser level is still increasing, but that's fine, that can keep going. It takes a little time and that's no problem. Here's our notification to say what time? 10 o'clock, awesome. So we may be producing power before the next 30 minutes. So let's go over here to our energy generation. And let's just turn our turbine bypass all the way up to 100%. And don't worry, in the future, there will be more patches to make sure that this is better to increase or decrease, probably in terms of this sort of method right here. It is coming, don't worry, there's like almost daily updates. At the same time, we'll turn on our only available resistor bank on and we'll just leave that as is. So that's now increasing up to 100% very slowly. And our condenser should be just over capacitized. That's fine. Let's turn that off. You won't get an alarm unless this is at least above 31,000. So you're still fine for quite a while. Moving on to the next thing. Since we are almost ready to increase our temperature, let's prime this coolant system that's flowing water around the core. So let's turn it on to 50% and turn our only available pump three on. That's the only one you get when you start a new game. And then that will obviously start priming up. That's awesome. So this is literally just flowing water around the reactor core. And this is the sort of percentage it is transferring the heat onto your steam generator to boil the water inside of it, to create the steam, to power the turbines. With that used steam, it will then come over to the condenser to be turned back into water to then get recircled and recycled back into the generator. So obviously the higher this is, 
the harder your generator has to work and the easier it is to turn that water back into steam to get more power out of those turbines. So we'll come back over here. We're almost at perfect temp uh, uh, pre uh, perfect pressure. So let's go ahead and increase our reactivity and our temperature of our reactor core by decreasing that number there and yanking those control rods out of the core by about 94 to start with. That's quite a large number for what you'll need to and this temperature is going to raise dramatically fast. You'll see it eventually from this gauge right here on whether you're going to be going up or you're going down. So once this gets to 55, a little animation will pop up saying you've got critical mass just about to come up. That's perfectly normal. It's just coming up the temperature. Wait for it. There it is with a little shake, possibly. There it is with a little blue flashlight. You can probably see that a lot better. If you click that button on there and then go inside the pool, nice and blue. But I'm gonna flick the surveillance camera off because I wanna see the demand and what we're delivering for now. So obviously we're increasing our temperature and this is the inlet of this water system that's flowing around the reactor core. So once this gets to around about 150 degrees, it's going to drop the water in the generator down because it's turning it into steam. So let's get ready for when that happens. Turn that on to 50 and then push it down to 45 without turning the pump on just yet. So we're almost at 150. So this number over here will start dropping almost very soon. Let's go ahead and check our temperature very quickly and our pressure. We're almost over pressured. So let's turn that off almost perfect for what we wanted we wanted about 170 ish that's good let's go over here let's make sure that this isn't dropping too fast there you go the number is dropping so let's turn on our only available pump for the generator which is pump three and it will start priming up like you see don't worry it's going to catch up to this what it's going to do is that it's flowing more water into the generator so it can then boil that off to increase the power output so it is now past 10 o'clock. We want to output power to the grid. So I don't want to bypass this steam. I want it to go through that turbine to produce power out to the grid. So let's turn this all the way down to zero. And that will get there eventually. Don't worry. Our resistor bank, I'll explain in just a second. Don't worry about that either. Vacuum's pulled. Our level is nice and good. This one's dropping, but it should be increasing as you see just there. Don't worry, when it gets to about 3700, then you'll start be over overturning your turbine, creating too much power, and you'll be lowering its integrity and raising its repair value. So that means you'll need to repair it more or pay more to repair it. So now that that's increasing, that's awesome. Let's come back over to our actual temperature and it's raising very, very fast. We don't want it to raise that fast. So let's slow it down. I'm gonna say 98, just for now, just to kind of neutralize it just a little bit. As you see, it's kind of stabilizing and coming down a little bit there. That's awesome. So I'm now gonna raise it back up to 99.2, and that is just the magical number, trust me, to let it raise up to about 360 perfectly when you first start up. So I shouldn't have to worry about changing this at all for quite some time and that temperature should come up perfect to what you want it and should stay there for quite some time for you to learn some more like comment subscribe if you want more of this and i'll make another episode in the future on how to get more power up to like 15,000 kilowatts because at the moment on 50 percent transfer rate over to our generator you'll only be able to get about 8,000 kilowatts but that's probably pretty good for at least the first three, maybe four days of in-game time on what they are demanding. So obviously we are now producing power. Our turbine bypass valve is completely closed. So anything we're producing in our generator is going through the turbine and is producing power. So that's going to raise dramatically. That's awesome. More and more power. So let's come over here. And this is the gauge you really wanna watch until you get stable. So now is the time to get a stable power output and to get this number right here to stay almost neither up nor down. So there's a little trick to it. Right now it's below 
3250. 3250 is the golden number, so let's crank this up to 50% by pressing that medium button right there. So what that's going to do is that it's going to increase the water flow into the generator to be created into steam to produce more power. Hope I said that right. That's ultimately going to come back to the condenser and raise this temperature. So I don't want any alarms to go off saying this is not running. So I'm going to turn this pump on just to 1%. When this temperature gets to 70 degrees, then I'll turn it up to 2% total. You don't really need it because the higher the temperature in this condenser, obviously, the less this has to work to turn it back into steam to produce more power and then get recycled and blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Awesome. We are now delivering what our city is demanding and I can explain what those resistors do. The resistors is now burning off any excess energy that we are overproducing that our city does not want. So we are currently producing 6741 kilowatts, but the city only wants 5863. So obviously 313 kilowatts are burning off into this resistor bank, so it's increasing the temperature. Raise it too high, above 60 degrees, you're doing serious damage and it will blow up. It's a pain in the butt as you won't be able to get 100% compliance on your estimate. So don't worry about the 10 o'clock time as it's not counted. You don't really get any money for it whatsoever. So we'll press tab, go into our objectives and that's where you can see them just there. Eventually they'll request you to produce at least 95% or so of this service compliance estimate. So what you're delivering compared to what they're demanding. So we'll come back over here and let's see how this one's going. That's perfectly fine. It is now lowering in value quite rapidly. That's perfectly fine. When it gets to 3250 again, you want to raise it up by another five. And that's the last dramatic increase you'll want to do on this generator. So it's going to be quite big. So there's the 3250 right there. Let's increase this by another five. Let's just see what this is gonna do. And this should be quite good. It's going to overcapacitize this to the point that there's going to be so much water in it. It can create so much steam, you'll get almost the max capacity of kilowatts. You can out of the 50% transfers from the reactor core. So obviously we'll come back over here. Our vessel pressure is a little low. So let's go ahead and turn the heater on onto the medium setting because I'm quite impatient and we'll just watch it raise ever so slightly. We'll probably stop it at about 170 bars. So we'll just wait for that. We're almost there. A uh, quick little tip as well. If you want to zoom in on sorts of things, so there's the 170, I'll turn that off. Shift, right click, and then if you hold A or hold S, it will actually zoom in on all sorts of stuff. So this is actually really quite a good feature. I did not really know about until recently. So zoom, 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 zoom. Yeah, that's cool. So here we are. Perfect, exactly what we want. So we are overcapacitizing it by just a smidge compared to what we're giving it. So this should drop down quite slowly. From now, you don't want to increase or decrease this by any more than 1% or so. Obviously increasing it will give you more power, but don't overload the system. Leave this as is, and you should be good for at least a couple days. Coming over to the condenser, when this gets to 70 degrees, obviously turn this up to two. When it gets to 80 degrees, turn it up to three. When it gets to 90 degrees, turn it up to four, but keep an eye on it. Any higher than 100 degrees, you're losing your volume in your condenser, and that's pretty much GG game over. So keep an eye on that one. So we'll quickly come over, our temperature's still rising nice and easy, so we're still transferring, even so, a little more and more heat, the more we increase the temperature over here. So we've got 7,000 kilowatts even, we've got a practically stable input and output of water flow through our generator itself. So you see it's dropping by one or two just there. I'm going to crank this up by one up to 50, oh. 56 there we go 
and then we're just gonna check it again so here we go so it's still dropping ever so slightly or that may even be stable as is it's raising ever so slightly but that's fine the hotter it gets and the more you transfer over the more steam that will be created the higher you'll need to put this which will ultimately raise this to output more power pretty much so to sum that up in the next episode if you want it like comment subscribe by raising this you'll need to increase the water flow into the generator which will ultimately increase the turbines to create more power obviously that will then create more temperature then on top of that a little note if you increase this as well you're pulling more and more heat away from your reactor so you'll need to decrease this value here to increase the temperature and its reactivity so we're still raising ever so slightly and this is absolutely perfectly stable and we're producing exactly what the grid and the city wants in terms of its power requirements from here we can now do the last thing and we can turn off our internal generator upstairs there it goes just there in the background powering down it's actually right above our heads right now check out the last episode if you want to walk around the plant and see where everything is and what it does etc that's in my last previous episode so turning this on automatic since we are producing power the generator's gone oh yeah you don't need me anymore i'm going to turn myself off goodbye and just shuts down no problem being in automatic if anything goes wrong your generator will be able to turn on after a certain time using the batteries in the meantime so you can still get in control of all of these panels here so just keep that in mind so here's our little fresh peek into the last episode where we walked around and had a look in that little room over there and there's a crane up there there's so much to do in this game you've got a really stable power output i'm pretty sure at the moment you want this to be around 3250 to be completely efficient any more you'll be producing more power to the grid itself any less then you're not keeping up with it and there's too much steam in there over here we're almost at the 70 so i'm just going to bite the dust and just do that right now even though it's just decreasing it a little bit more but yeah at 70 you'll get it at two at 80 you'll have three at 90 you'll have four but then you'll keep an eye on it any time above 100 then you're really over temperaturizing everything and you're losing all that water volume i hope this was really informative for everyone and i hope you followed along as much as possible make sure you comment like subscribe anything i've missed out as well as hitting that bell icon to see more of this and stay sharp till next time as always see ya